everybody. How you doing? Welcome to the live stream. Jim here from Side Hustle Shuffle. Special edition. Special edition today on Friday. Good Friday. Happy Good Friday. Uh, all right. Cut it out. That's enough. All right. Anyway, we're here on Friday. We're going to talk about Amazon Influencer Program. We're going to talk about uh, six-figure earner uh, Billy Thorpe is here to give you his wisdom, and we're going to talk to him right away. Um, we're going to take some uh, minutes to check out the uh, various places we're live. We're live on uh, uh, YouTube, Facebook. Uh, I think we're on X and LinkedIn as well today, so that's pretty cool. Uh, we're on. we got to mute some things here. All right, so that's working. So there's a delay. There's a delay. So you put your uh, comments in the chat. And uh, from there, I will try and get your questions answered today. Okay. So by all means, let me turn this down a little bit. So anyway, I met Billy in a clubhouse room not too long ago and uh, started listening. I was like a fly on the wall, just, you know, kind of listening to what's going on, trying to, trying to gain some knowledge. And uh, yeah, I started hearing this guy talk about uh, what he was doing and that he wasn't relying on Amazon uh, commissions to, to make his to make his money. He's, his line kind of was, uh, you know, you upload to Amazon and, and it's out of your control. It's out of your control. You've done all that work. And then and then what? You have no control over your own content. It's kind of crazy. Right. Um, so but he's found a way to, to keep control and, uh, and, and to make money with it. So it's pretty cool. And then you probably are aware of, of, of the method. It's just the magnitude and, and the method and, and, and the way he goes about doing it. It's just it's just enlightening. Um, so we're going to welcome him right to the stage today, and uh, here he is. This is uh, Billy Thorpe. Hey, what's going on, Jim? Good to see you. How you doing, Billy? Welcome, welcome. Glad I'm to have good. you. Glad to have you. Let's we'll turn this down a little bit. You know, uh, so how you doing today? It's Friday. Good Friday. What you doing today? What, what's your normal morning routine like? <laughs> oh, chaos. No, I'm just kidding. Um, well, man, I try to get up as early as I can. So uh, about 4.30, 5 uh, a.m., try to get ready, get the dogs out, do the thing, get to the office, and start working on deals, and then doing videos, and then <clears throat> you know doing, doing all the other stuff, community stuff, and then clubhouse, and then you know trying, trying to create content on other places. So... Uh, yeah, man, we could dive. We could we could dive yeah. in each piece of that, but I try to get started super early. Um, and we live a, a certain lifestyle that my wife and I have chosen with our with our five year old with our son, and so I try to be home with him uh, as much as possible. And so, yeah, man, I get started early and I get done early and and get home. And uh, but yeah, still trying to do all the things. So yeah, it's a little. Well, that's crazy. what it's all about being home with family. You know, that's what, that's why we're doing this kind of stuff is just so, so we have the time freedom to do what we want when we want to do it, you know, uh, for sure. It's important. It was important to me. Uh, the, how I got into this was, uh, was I wanted my wife to stay home, and raise the kids. Same thing. You know, it was like, you know, how am I going to do that? You know, uh, you know, you, you got two salaries coming in all of a sudden one of you wants to stay home and you're making half your money. How do you, how are you supposed to survive on that in today's age when everything is going up, up, up. Right. So, you know, uh, it's crazy. Um, but I kind of met you and I, my, my path is similar to yours where, uh, you know, Chris Giles, Monty Weaver and, uh, and, uh, and, and, uh, always, uh, uh, Dan, Dan, uh, Oh yeah. Dan Courier. Dan yeah. Courier. Dan Courier. Yep. Dan Courier. I, I was going to his people, a video. He had, he had a conference and it kind of turned me on to this whole thing, uh, back in 2000, uh, 2020, I should say 2020. Uh, so yeah, what was your, what was your start to the, to the show here? Yeah, man, it was kind of the same thing. So I, um, I was, I owned a t-shirt printing business before this and then, 2020 came that went way down pretty slow canceled order after canceled order uh, i was kind of messing in the podcasting space with niche podcast and then i partnered with another guy and so we started doing this podcast and we did it for three years 140 episodes and we were sponsored the entire time basically after episode five and it was a lot of fun so i was on clubhouse talking to groups of creators about monetizing podcasts through sponsorship deals and that's where I met Chris Giles. So Chris and I are one of the first people I talked to on that app. And then Monty Weaver. And they were like, dude, you got to check out this live stream thing on Amazon. You can go live, talk about the products around your house and make money. And I was kind of like, yeah, okay, whatever. Um, and I kind of sat on it. And then they kept talking about how lucrative this was and how good of a you know stream of revenue this was as, as a content creator. And so that's when I really decided just to like, okay, let me look at it. Of course, I wasn't qualified because I wasn't an influencer at the time. 
and I didn't have a big audience. And so I just worked my tail off on Clubhouse, getting people. And luckily back then, they didn't have any back chats or any of that stuff. So any way to connect with people was on to Instagram or to Twitter. And so I was just pushing people to my Instagram, having them follow me. And so I was just on there all the all day long, all the time, just creating content and getting people to come follow me so I could get enough followers and engagement on my Instagram to get approved for the Amazon Influencer Program. So I worked months just to get to that point, just to even get into the program. And then by that time, live streaming had kind of taken a dip, but shoppable content was the thing. And that's where I saw Dan Courier. Um, he came on a podcast that I was hosting at the time. And, you know, kind of off camera, he was telling me how much money he was making and all this stuff. And I was like, wait, dude, you're just creating videos about products? Like, this is insane. And um, and so I was living, I think I was living in Puerto Rico at the time. And I created 30 product videos. And it was just stuff on my desk, my camera, my lights, all the crap I used, this microphone. And it started generating immediately somewhere between $375 and $75 to like, like $600 a month. And keep in mind, I'm a podcaster with sponsorship deals with a monetized YouTube channel. And that YouTube channel was creating nowhere near that amount of month. <laughs> you know, I think I made $800 a year off of that, more or less, you know, a month. And so I was in Puerto Rico, middle of the ocean, couldn't get any products, definitely couldn't do any brand deals. But I was studying guys like Monty, who's jumped into the chat. Yep. I was studying guys like Dan. And then, you know, I quickly realized like there's all these companies that sell product on Amazon that want creators to make videos about their product. And so when I came back to the States, um, I basically just said, man, I'm going to give myself 90 days. I'm going to give myself a 90 day window. And I told my wife this and we were, you know, kind of coming off of a big move, very expensive move. I'm like, I just need 90 days to just like give myself to figure this out. And man, we started cranking. I just started cranking brand deals like crazy, doing product videos like crazy, um, asking, you know, get paid cheap, free, whatever kind of product I can get in my hands. And then, um, yeah, man. So then I just developed this business model and kind of this workflow um, that I think really is the um, kind of the little golden coin of my business is, is really the work model. It's not really the, you know, I mean, the opportunity to get brand deals and work with companies and sellers and all that is huge, but it's the organization of those things that really kind of let me scale and, and really, uh, you know, scale the business to the way I want it to. So, yeah, I mean, that's kind of how I got into it. So I blame Monty. I blame uh, Chris. Yeah. I blame Chris. Jo I, I blame Chris uh, over at Deal Maker or um, Deal Casters. I, I blame those guys. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know Deal Casters. They're, they're another two guys, Jim and Chris. Uh, yeah. But I want to say hi to Monty while we got a second here. Monty's one of the guys that got us both involved into this. He had a, a, a start of a Facebook group. We were meeting on, on Fridays and, and, and really showed me a lot of ways to, to get started. And, and, and thank you, Monty, for that. Now that I got the opportunity to talk to you live. Um, but it, it's interesting that because you knuckled down on the brand deal aspect where most people, after they're done with the stuff in their house, they start investing money and, and buying products and, you know, and, and hit or miss, you know, and it's, it's all like, but you know, so what made you not go that way? You know? Well, I think there's multiple strategies within this space. And the thing is, is one, I didn't have money to invest. So that was pretty easy decision. Like, okay, we're not spending money to go make money because we don't have money. <laughs> to there you spend. Go. Uh, so that was a pretty easy decision for me. But then also, I think I kind of quickly realized and kind of just being an entrepreneur, and I've done a lot of different stuff, uh, you know, start, you know, starting little businesses, little brands, working with people, affiliate programs, all kinds of different things. And I just realized that like people's businesses change. And, and if I rely solely on someone else's business to make me money, then I'm vulnerable. And I've already went through that in 2020 when I literally catered to one type of audience, one demographic. And then when that all came crashing down, I wasn't diversified enough to make a transition and I didn't have the, you know, the time to make a transition to serve other people within that t-shirt industry. Cause there's people who still printed t-shirts for brands who sold online. I didn't have those connections. My stuff was all in person. And so I think I realized like I got to diversify more and I have to control the email list, the book of the book of business and I cannot just rely on Amazon to place these videos for me. And then also the competition that happens on the carousel. So if I'm going out looking for super good qualified products 
and so is a thousand other people, well, it's probably a pretty good chance that we're all going to find those and there's only 10 spots. So thousands of people, 10 spots to get on there. And so my, my mentality was, well, if I can get in relationship with brands, sellers, marketing agencies in a certain you know marketplace, then I can do a frequency model. So I can do more videos. I can do low ticket, high frequency, move a lot of product and get more placement on these carousels across Amazon. And that way, no matter what size brand, if, if you know, if I do a, a, a video about this cell phone case, well, then that's going to show up on the, not only the product listing potentially, but also potentially in those related products. So it's going to give me more exposures as a content creator and as an influencer to do more deals um, with other people. And I can build my portfolio super fast and not have to leave this office chair um, or not, or very seldom leave this office chair. So, and I get the model of, go and and qualify products and buy the product and do the thing. I also get the model of do everything in your house, go to your cousin's house, Airbnbs. I mean, we've heard all these strategies, people going to stores, which I don't think you should do that <laughs> and, and recording off the shelf. I mean, we've heard all kinds of crazy ways of people getting a lot of product videos. But once again, I don't care if I do 10,000 product videos. If Amazon decides, eh, we're going to take your account away, we're going to take this, this carousel way, then I'm exposed. But right now I set myself aside as a content creator to go, Oh, if Amazon pulls the plug, if TikTok pulls the plug, if Walmart creator pulls the plug, then I have a book of business of over 500 people right now that I can reach out to and say, Hey, let's up that price just a little bit and I'll give you the video and you can have it because they still need marketing material and they can host it themselves. So, I think this has proved itself and not that I'm the guy that's like, Oh, I've told you so, but I think I told you so over the last couple months as we've seen these carousels go away and I've literally seen reports of an 80% dip in revenue for some of these content creators. And we've seen that same dip, stuff. but we've what not seen stuff. it as much. So anyway. So how do you deal with uh, what I call the shark tank of Facebook marketplace or Facebook uh, messenger where, you know, it's, it's like, you know, me, 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 pick me, you know, I got a product here in this Facebook group, that Facebook group. And then like everybody's running towards and every me, me, me and DM me and, and you're like fighting with all the other creators. And what bothers me is I don't even know if they want my type, you know, do they want mm -hmm. my age group and my and, and, and a man you know, or do they want something different? And I'm wasting my time chasing these people around and, and fighting with other creators. How do you deal with that shark tank? Yeah, man, you'll never see me going in there and fighting in the comments or anything. I reach out. Um, and so early on, what I did early on was I reached out to these companies and just said, hey, I'm a content creator, influencer, whatever. Would love to work with you. And then I showed up and did the work. So that's a big thing. I showed up, I showed up on time. I did it. I did it quick. Now, sure. We've, you know, we've been slow getting product videos done and all that stuff and, you know, stuff that takes like build time and install time will slow me down. But I think I showed up with quality video. I showed up with quality content and I was able to do it quickly. And so I've built a reputation up over the last couple of years of like, Oh, this guy is got a great camera, great setup, great lighting. And he gets stuff done super quick. And that's all about the efficiency of, you know, being able to, to switch from camera to camera on my desk and uh, push buttons and, and create a video in the amount of time it takes me. However long the video is, that's how much time it took me to make the video. Mine is probably two or three minutes on each end to um, prep, you know, prep the product or whatever. Uh, but most products I can move that quick on. And so I think it's just about, you know, building your craft as a creator and as a content creator and sure, there's some of those variables of this is the type of person we're looking for. This is the type of person we're not. And, and I think like that is going to be something that we have to navigate um, at different times to figure out what brands that we really can work with. Uh, because there's product out there for everybody. I mean, there's millions of products on Amazon and it, they're not just for the, you know, young, like hip like fresh skinned, you know, college girls. Like I think there's product out there for people that we relate to, like, you know, exactly. guys, thirties, forties, fifties, sixties, like it's out there. We just maybe have to do a little more legwork to go find those deals. Yeah, that's great. Um, now, as far as 
price. And you know, some people are a better salesman than others. Some people have better, you know, speaking voice and and and, and can hook them a little better in the conversation. Um, but a lot of guys, uh, girls in the, in the industry are hung up on price and how much they're charging for their videos, and they want to up it, up it, up it. So like, like, what do you start at a thousand dollars and work your way down, and, and how low down? And it, isn't it about now volume because now you want repeat business? So how do you hook them in and get them in there without insulting them and losing the deal because you asked for too much? Yeah, this is funny. So I think, and I've had I've had like a seventeen year career, uh, or I'll say seventeen years of exposure in the video production space. So either that's me personally, that's friends of mine owning production companies, and I think you got to go study the market of like what is video production, what is the price, what do you get for X amount of dollars, and a lot of creators, and I know they're gonna get pissed. You're just not what you think you are. Okay. And that's just facts. It's just facts. Like you didn't invest in the equipment. You're showing up with a shaky camera. Your audio is terrible. And you want a thousand dollars of video. Get out of here. Like there's people who produced, you know, like really good quality TV quality commercials for a thousand bucks. And they got pro gear and they're like really know their equipment and really doing a good job. So I think that you got to understand the market that you're in as well. It's like, you know, I work mainly with Chinese manufacturing companies, Chinese sellers, Chinese agencies. Okay. So I understand that this industry in China has been going on for a really long time. There's a certain way they do stuff and it's a very much a frequency model. And if you study the game, you'll know like it's fast paced, they're moving, they're doing quick stuff. There's a lot of product being manufactured. So I can be the guy who's like, I'm only doing it for a hundred dollars a video and I can do five videos a month. Or I can be the guy who goes, I'll do it for $25 a video. I can do 180 videos a month, and then I can resell the product and create a whole nother stream of revenue in the resale space, and then also have all that placement on Amazon as well. So I'm really monetizing this deal three ways, not to mention, if in my case, if I would get diligent and put all my content on YouTube or TikTok or you know Instagram or wherever else, then I can drive more traffic to Amazon and create even more streams of revenue. So it really depends on the bandwidth and the business model. Uh, I started making videos for zero to five, 15 bucks or whatever. And then I went the opposite way. Instead of starting high and coming down, I started low and went up because honestly, I had no idea what I was doing. So I couldn't feel good about, you know, going, hey, give me a hundred bucks or 500 bucks or a thousand dollars when I'm like, I don't even know what that, I don't even know what this industry is. And I think if we're all honest, even some of us been in here for a couple of years, three, four years, whatever, it's still really new in industry in the States. And so we're all trying to figure out what model works for us. Um, and this is just my, what I like. I love the, I love the change. You know, I would rather work on a hundred videos a month than, and feel the pressure of getting that done, you know, over somebody paying me $10,000. Now I got to produce a $10,000 video. Like I just, and, and plus I have all these other reps and streams of revenue versus I got this one person paying me this one check. If that deal goes sideways, I'm exposed. If one of these deals goes sideways, I still have a business. Right. So that's I just want to say hi to Vaughn. Vaughn's in the chat there and he's, he's talking about your $7 group, which we're going to get to. I'm going to post a, a link in the chat for everybody. <laughs> uh, yeah, but yeah, uh, uh, you have a Monday meeting, eight o'clock Monday mornings, right? And uh, you want to talk about that quickly while he brought it up? Yeah, yeah, Vaughn. I appreciate Vaughn. He's a he's a good guy. We've been swapping texts for probably over a year, and um, you know, we we were masterminding before I started the mastermind group. But the and really, Jim, the reason I started this mastermind, you know, group that we have called Deal Makers, you're in it, Vaughn's in it, um, and it's just to help people like realize the other opportunities out there with inside of the ecosystem of you know influencing or content creator and really as a small content creator and this is where i think in podcasting in live streaming um in amazon world like i've really excelled as a small audience content creator entrepreneur first content creator second i think about stuff different i ask different questions and i really don't care to push back and go okay well i have a skill set i know i don't have a million followers but I can create just as good a content as the guy with the million followers, but I can do it a lot faster than that guy can and move, you know, move the needle. And so I'm just trying to help other content creators, you know, really understand the business and, and understand there's different ways to make money with this rather than just, I'm going to upload as many videos as I can from my house, or I'm going to go spend, you know, I saw somebody the other day on a Facebook page, like I spent $1,200 
on product. And I'm like, wow, that is amazing. And I hope that you get that back. And like, what's the return time is my question, because you might put it out there. Uh, but it's like, will you get that money back? I don't know. You don't know either. And that's a weird business in my opinion. So the problem um, with that is it's up to Amazon, whether they place your video, that's the problem. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So anyway, I started the membership group, you know, I made it low ticket. So it's low ticket and I'm pretty transparent with my business concepts. I'm like low ticket, low responsibility. I can get in there when I want, how I want, drop content, do a weekly call and feel good about going to bed at night. Now, if I was once again, somebody asked me the other day, why not a thousand dollars a month? I'm like, cause dude, if I charge people a thousand dollars a month, I mean, I'm going to be living in there. I'm going to be so stressed that I'm not bringing enough value for them to recoup their thousand dollars a month. Then I'm going to be like sweating bullets. My life will be miserable. But at seven bucks a month, I'm like, cool. You came in, you read some stuff. You didn't take action. You didn't make money. You leave, like take your $7 and go somewhere else. Like I don't, you're not my person anyway. Right. Um, and so you know, I think that's why I did it. And also my inbox was like blowing up with questions. And I'm like, dude, I got to find somewhere to host it, but then I got to pay for the place to host it. And so it's really just a low ticket, low responsibility offer to be able to cover the cost of the platform I'm hosting it on. So that's kind of my mentality about it. And I love helping people. So yeah, no, I think it's great. Uh, it's great to keep people accountable. You know, it's not, it's, it's just enough money to, to like, you know, like a cup of coffee basically, you know, so to make you want to show up and, and the value is there for sure. Uh, it, we're isolated people, you know, we're, we're in our office, we're in our basement, we're in an attic, wherever we're doing our content. And, and, you know, you know, the wife don't know what I'm doing. The, you know, the friends really don't understand what I'm doing. So it's like, you need someplace you can bounce ideas off of. If you don't have that, you'll go nuts. You know, yeah, um, that's true. So the next, the next thing now, now you got a pile of stuff, like you're sitting on a pile of stuff. And, and so what do you do now? You know, it's like, <laughs> Dude, I love this because I, I had this happen. Uh, I was in another studio space that I had rented and I put shelves. I was like, I'm going to get shelves on the side. So I did that. And I, and dude, they quickly filled up. And then all of a sudden they're like, almost like just, I was about to die under a pile of product. And I was like, dude, I got to get rid of this stuff. And, um, and I tried a lot of different things. Like, you know, I went to a pawn shop, had a guy from a pawn shop come out and take a look. And he's like, yeah, I'll take it all down to the pawn shop, put it in the back room, process it for two weeks and I can make you an offer. And we all know how that's going to go. He's going to take 400 products. He's going to take it over there and offer me $20. So I was like, ah, forget about it. And then I was like, I'm going to sell it on Facebook marketplace. Well, in our area, Facebook marketplace is a big dumpster fire. I haven't figured that out. And it's just like, is this available? If I see that one more time, I'm going to croak. Um, so then I was like, I don't, I don't know what to do with all this. And then I found a family who wanted to kind of get into reselling. So I sold them a bunch of stuff. Uh, probably a couple times they bought just a whole lot of stuff off of me. And then, you know, I, I called them back when I was ready for another, like a third round. And they're like, no, nah, we're not doing that. The boys lost interest, you know, whatever. And then I was kind of stuck. And once again, clubhouse came in for the, for, you know, came in clutch for the save. I'm on clubhouse. I'm talking to Gina, who's in our group. I'm talking to Cheryl, which is her co-host of their live show. And they're like, you got to check out whatnot and see if you can sell it on there. And dude, I thought they were selling on whatnot. I had no idea that they didn't sell on whatnot. So I jump on whatnot. I get approved for an account. I go live. I sell like eight products in five minutes. And I'm like, uh, and I just put it together like a 10 product show. And I'm like, uh, maybe I should figure this out. And uh, so now I think I've sold over 1200 products on there, direct to consumer. Uh, now I do have to ship everything, which it's not as bad as it sounds. I know some people are like, oh man, shipping is terrible. Um, but it's a cool platform and it's a reselling platform. So it's like it creates a whole nother opportunity. And I have about 2,700 people over there who follow me who are buyers on the platform. And so, you know, I could go make an investment into other products, liquidation trucks, different things like that, and have another piece of the business that's going out. And, and we're looking at some of that stuff too. Um, and that's how I sell most of my stuff. And then whatever's left over, I try to sell it in my yard at a yard sale. And then whatever's left over, I just give it away. Uh, and I yeah, give a ton of stuff away too. And sometimes I'll even take product knowing who I'm giving it to, or I'll ask them first and then I would give it to them. So exactly. Yeah. And it's nice. To, it's nice to give things away too. Um, 
Do you mess around with Canada, UK, anything, any of the other marketplaces, or are you just basically USA? Man, I I have accounts on all those things, but it's a bandwidth thing for me to to figure that out and to go upload stuff and you know because I don't think all the same products are available, and so it would really take it'd probably take me more time to go figure it out to be like what like what am I going to get paid here? <laughs> you know? yeah, exactly, the money's not there yet to be focusing on it, right? And nobody's paying me to post it there, so I'm like I'm right. not going to do work for free. So I mean I'm greedy in that sense of like I want to get paid to to post this in different places. And the whatnot thing, you know, it's, it's the value. I just want to mention the value of going to the groups like yours, the $7 group, uh, you know, clubhouse groups. Like when I went to Dan Curry's uh, People of Video uh, conference in Albany, uh, you, you, you get around people, you hear ideas, you find out what other people are doing. Like you said, when you thought they were doing whatnot, that was just an idea they threw out. You dove into it and, and look what happened. It was just somebody, you know, gave you an idea is if you're sitting alone in your room. You know, you're not going to get those ideas from people. You're yeah. not going to find out what the next best thing is. And uh, I took your advice. I, I took your link to, to whatnot that you posted in this $7 group. And uh, uh, yeah, I got approved right away. So oh, nice. I'm, I'm, nice. Yeah, I'm getting ready to go to my uh, orientation or whatever tonight. And uh, we'll see how it goes. But the same thing, I, I was exposed to whatnot a long time ago when I was still doing the uh, marketplace and, and having garage sales and stuff. But uh, the shipping scared the crap out of me because I was I came from uh, retail arbitrage and 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 shipping was a nightmare returns and all that kind of stuff you know, on eBay. Uh, so I didn't want to do shipping. But then I, as I looked into it, it looks so simple. All you got to really do is get the weight right, and and they're going to print you out the labels and you just drop it off, and it's pretty, pretty it looks yeah. pretty simple. Yeah, man. So it's kind of interesting because you'll weigh you'll weigh everything before. Um, and what I do, and you're supposed to weigh it with like packaging and everything, but you'll, you kind of can weigh a box and figure out what it costs or, you know, what the weight is. So you can kind of add, you can do kind of quick math and, and add it on there. And a lot of times it's just the next tier up. So, and you'll kind of figure that out. Like if it's a pound, you know, if it's, it's a, if it's a, a pound in, in 13 ounces, you know, like I got to put this in the two to four pound category because that's what it's going to ship at. And so it kind of has it listed like that when you're putting it and you can put it on it. They have a spreadsheet and you can just, if you've got a system, you can export all your deals from your CRM or from your, you know, your spreadsheet or whatever, and then just like copy paste those columns into their spreadsheet and make it a lot easier. So it, what I just did in my CRM is I have all that stuff listed now of like weight and everything. So I'm putting in the weight and Amazon tells you the weight of the product. Now I may yeah. verify that weight before I upload it to, uh, to whatnot, but you can basically kind of fill out all that data that you need to resell it before you resell it. Uh, retail price, what your sell price is, all that kind of stuff. And um, <clears throat> so anyway, I, I won't get too much in the weeds. We'll talk about that at a different place. Uh, but man, it's it's pretty fun. And then one and one tip for you, Jim, too, is to just save all your packaging from Amazon. Uh, and, and I don't spend any money on packaging. I don't spend any money on the packing supplies that you put inside of it. Only thing I've spent money on is tape. And that's it. Mm -hmm. And so in time, it's tape and time when it comes to to reselling this product on on whatnot. And then another member of our group, Candace, I just saw she started her own um, in her local area, just her own resale Facebook group. And she's I think she probably got hundreds of people in there already uh, just like to say, hey, join me in this Facebook group. I'm going to list this stuff I get from Amazon. If you want it, you can buy it and come pick it up. So that's another thing. I, I, love, I love watching the group and watching people take action and, and, and seeing things bounce off, blow up on them. It's, it's just awesome to be part and just watch it happen. You know, uh, I think it's great. Um, the other thing too about it was, was that if you like to go live on Amazon, when Amazon live was still a thing, you know, a year and a half, two years ago when I was going on live and, and being on the product page when you went live and it was worth it, you'd get traffic and everything. Uh, and I had a lot of fun doing it and I was give, doing giveaways. You can't do giveaways on Amazon anymore. Guess what? On whatnot, you can. It's it, you can have yeah. that blast you have, you know, that you were having as as a, as a live seller. You do giveaways, and 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 I don't know. It looks it looks like a hell of a lot of fun. I can't wait to get back into it. Dude, it, yeah, you're gonna love it, man. And what I did for giveaway stuff is I got like a bunch of these like little stickers or something, like yeah. my little logo. I got some coasters, and sometimes I'll give away like one of my items. Uh, you pay for the shipping as the as the seller uh, for giveaways. But yeah, man, it's cool. And now they get it set up where you can give something away and keep running auctions at the same time. So uh, for people listening and watching, it's like 
whatnot is basically like eBay meets Twitch. And so it's like live stream auctions. Now they do have a marketplace on there as well. And then I think eBay is doing, you know, that as well. Like they're, they're tapping into the live streaming, but this whole live selling and product demo and video. And I mean, dude, we're on like the forefront of it, I believe. And so I'm excited, you know, for the opportunities. And there's so many app opportunities as a content creator, because it's not just about, you know, can I get a deal? Can I get products? Can I resell them? Can I, you know, whatever, like you could with the right, mentality business model structure and plan go find a liquidation company and say hey let me come in or maybe a bin store you know they get these amazon bin stores all over the place let me come in and after hours set up a camera go live on whatnot i'll sell stuff for you i'll ship it you know right here we'll ship it right out of your location and then we'll just split profit or we'll you know you give me a percentage um, or better yet, I'll come in, I'll sell whatever, all your high ticket items on whatnot or stuff that's not moving quick. And then you can just give me a percentage, but you handle all the shipping and everything. You know, and yeah, as a content are you creator, guys you listening to him? Are you guys listening to you? These, these are skills that you could take anywhere with you. Like all these different things that are popping off. Now we're on whatnot. We started on Amazon. You, know, you could be on YouTube. Like this uh, TikTok. These skills are going to go with you everywhere if you if you do it right and you, and you keep it organized and you keep everything together and you got that Rolodex of contacts contacts, you know. Um, my my question and and I think the question that's on a lot of people is: Do you know the infrastructure of these guys, agent, brand, seller? You know, who are you actually dealing with when you're talking to them? You know, and and how much pull do they actually have? Yeah, I am not 100% sure, to be honest with you. I mean, my best guess is I've talked to people, like I have companies that I talk to. So just like any other company, maybe they they have a marketing director or you know somebody in their marketing department. So that's one person that I talk to. So if I get a company, you know, some, some email from some company out there, uh, that's probably who I'm dealing with is their marketing department. Now, when it comes to agencies, which is how I break it down in my mind of like company or manufacturing company, agency um the agencies are more of i think they're working with all these different companies to as like kind of like a mark like a marketing company you know kind of like their own marketing agency to say hey we'll go find influencers and make this connection what products do you need videos of and they probably just charge whatever fee and then pay you a, a cut of that which honestly is cool with me and i like that even if i'm not getting paid a huge because if I work directly with the brand, I get paid much more than I do if I work with an agency. However, what's happening is when I work with these agencies, the brands will now find, oh, we really liked your video. They'll reach out directly and kind of bypass the agency. I don't get too in the weeds about that. I'm like, that's their business. That's their decision. I'm just making videos. So if somebody wants to pay me to make a video, I'm going to do that. Like my, my loyalty is to make videos because I don't know what this industry is going to do or when it's going to take a turn or whatever. Uh, so I'm going to just keep showing up and making videos. Uh, so if they want to bypass their relationships, they can do that, you know, whatever they need to. But uh, man, I, you know, to say like, what's the hierarchy and, you know, like if you talk to a brand and they, or talk to an agent and they go, Oh, they, our budget's 20 bucks. And you're like, okay, is it really 20 bucks? Is it really a hundred? You know, like, what is it? I find that most of those people are pretty consistent. And the cool thing is, is once you lock it in, you don't have to renegotiate every single deal. Like I have products show up to my doorstep just marked with this particular company in it's like my name and that company name in brackets. And I just know like that's for them. And here's the price. And we don't even talk about, can you do this? Can you not do this? They have a list of products I'll do and they just send them. And it's like on autopilot. And so as a business owner, I think about this as like cups of coffee. Like if I get a cup of coffee you know, Starbucks isn't, I mean, they're probably making money off coffee because it's probably, you know, it's probably pretty cheap to make, but you know, it's like they're a volume game. Like how many people can we get through the drive through and that's where they're making their money. So, um, you know, for me, I got pretty low overhead, pretty low, you know, I think my whole business all in all, like all in. And I just added like four over $400 of expenses per month, but I still think I'm like right at a thousand bucks a month to run a business, which is unheard of. You know, it's like, Oh, Everybody's in the same game, but some of us are entrepreneurs, some of us are creators, some of us are hobbyists, 
you know, and so like, we don't all have that same mentality. So you turned me on to something called CRM not too long ago, right? Uh, customer yep. relation management, right? And uh, can you touch on that? And, and like, that's, that's how you control and keep track of everything in a nutshell, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely, man. So I use, uh, I just switched over. I was actually, you know, I've done a lot of this stuff where like uh, I use like Trello. So Trello is just kind of like a project management tool and you're kind of just moving cards through like a pipeline, so to speak. Uh, I used HubSpot, like HubSpot's free account. And once again, it was very limited, but then I would use like spreadsheets with HubSpot and my friend John helped me set it all up. And so, but there was all these moving parts, right? I have to be like, yes, I'll do the deal. So I was opening up like five tabs, like, like Facebook personal messenger, Facebook business messenger, Instagram, my email, or actually two different emails. Somehow another email got out in the world. And so I had like five or six tabs open doing these deals, agreeing to it, agreeing to the price and having to copy and paste over to a spreadsheet. Then I have to export the spreadsheet and then upload it to HubSpot. I was spending hours and hours and hours doing this. And then my friend Charles owns pinnacle.ai. And he was like, dude, I can help you like solve all that. And I'm like, Oh, okay, whatever, dude. And, uh, and I sat on it for like three months. I have a really bad problem of just like sitting on stuff. And then he, you know, reached back out and was like, Hey, you want to do this? And I'm like, yeah, dude, let's do it. Now I invest like 300 bucks a month into the CRM, but everything comes into one place. So I come to my office, I process one inbox. I don't process 10 different places. I'm not copy and pasting anything. And the only thing I'm copying and pasting is if there's an opportunity I copy, paste it into the opportunity tab, create an opportunity out of it, and then it goes into a pipeline, and then I just move that deal through the pipeline um, all the way from product sent to product completed, you know, and that's sold or ready to sell or sold or whatever. Um, and, and that's just kind of how I've been moving it. It's still somewhat of a manual process just because the connection between us and, and the Chinese manufacturing company it, or companies is, I don't know if there's like firewalls or whatever in China, you know, they probably have different uh, rules and regulations on the internet, what links they can click and all that stuff. So invoicing these companies is kind of a nightmare trait, you know, tracking payments is kind of a nightmare. Um, but man, I really haven't had any issues where people are just like, we're not going to pay you. Um, right. I've, I've tracked down stuff, but it, you know, you know, so it's a business. I mean, there's parts of company you know, of owning a business that's really fun, uh, for me, that's when the UPS guy pulls up, that's pulling out a, I mean, I got a smart display yesterday that's battery powered that rolls around my office and it's like an Android, it's like a giant Android tablet. That's really fun. But the not fun stuff is, you know, making like going through and doing the admin stuff, you know, whatever. So, uh, but the CRM is great because it will help you keep everything organized, know where it's at in the flow, know what's going on. Uh, if that's just you individually or you and your husband, your wife, your partner, your, you know, whatever, your employees, uh, it'll help you keep all that stuff, you know, super organized. And then that CRM in particular is um, is great because I host our mastermind group there. It's all under one dashboard. So I host our mastermind group. I host my websites there. I just built an online or just had their VA team build me uh, an online store that we're going to populate with products and different offers. Um, doing this type of stuff, like teaching other people how to do it. I mean, that's a product. That's a being a content creator. I take this stuff I've tried out of my head. I put it into a course. I put it into a workshop. I put it into a mastermind group and I resell that. And so I think as a content, no matter where you're at, if you're a content creator or entrepreneur or a mix of both, at the end of the day, what's the goal? If the goal is just to have fun and get free product, this is a world that you're going to love. If the goal is to make a, a bunch of money, then this is a world you can also love. You just got to do the work to do it. Um, but it doesn't take that long. I mean, I put 180 deals in the pipeline this so far, this, you know, within the last 30 days. And I've worked about 20 to 25 hours a week and we'll produce all those same video. You know, it's like now all those videos may or may not come. All those deals may or may not hit my doorstep. But that's how many deals I'm able to put, you know, in a pipeline pretty quickly. And we could probably put 300 in there, but I just said no to a lot of stuff. So a um, lot of opportunity, man. I, I could talk all day and I, I just think there's people who have these skill sets to, to get on camera and you're doing it already. You're probably podcasting, you're probably live streaming. And now it's just, um, you know, talking about product, which is just, it's fun. It's not for everybody though. I get it. I get it. 
No, it's it's and it's confusing. Like I'm out doing my thing during the day, and you know, Facebook goes off, Instagram goes off, email goes off. You know, how many, how much of this are people coming to you, and how much of this is, hey, I want to do, I want to work with that brand. Do you do stuff like that and, and search them out? I, I would say in the beginning, it was um, I was reaching out to everybody in the beginning and just introducing myself. Hey, here's what I do. Um, but what I was trying to do is just build a portfolio. And so I think you, if I was just starting out, I would just do every product in my house to build a portfolio, but do it, do it horizontal and do it with good quality video, lighting, audio, make sure those three things are dialed in and you don't have to have the, all the fancy gear. You can use your camera or your phone. You could, you know, I would go get a softbox light because you just could control it more. Whatever, whatever pieces that you can control, do that and make the investment because um, once you once you do that, you can shoot any time of the day. Like I, I shoot here in my studio, it's gonna look like this forever. I don't care if it's <laughs> six o'clock in the morning or ten o'clock at night. It's gonna look just like this, yep. and I can show up and shoot like this all day. Um, and so I think a lot of people when they first start, they're like, "Oh, I'll just use my bay window." Well, your bay window only gives you so many hours of lighting. So it's like if stuff's not firing off or your brain's not working, and you're like, oh, "I just can't make this." I mean, I've had days, dude, where I try to shoot a video and I'm like forget it. I'm out. And I shoot everything live to drive. So I'm not editing anything. I'm literally picking stuff up and talking about it and switching my shots with my stream deck and then moving on to the next video. Um, But anyway, you know, I think that's the, I think that would be, and I kind of lost the question there because I started blabbing about (laughs) production stuff. Um, But yeah, man, I think it's just finding your, your, your rhythm, your routine and, whatever that looks like. I mean, we talked about the, the, like Candace in our group, she's a, she's a mom of, you know, m- multiple kids or a couple kids basketball. I mean, there, I see her Facebook is all over the place, like basketball and this and that she's like a nurse practitioner. And it's like, dude, she still did 50 deals her first month being in the, being in the mastermind group. And I'm yep. just like, golly, that's insane. And I'm, I'm, pr- I'm happy. Cause you know, it's one thing to say like, oh, this works really well for me and my personality and what I like to do, but it's really cool to see other people taking, and it's not huge things. It's little tweaks. It's like, Jim, you work, you know, you work a job, you work a W2 job, which is amazing. It's consistent. It's income. This is a side hustle for you, which is amazing. But it's like with a couple little tweaks, you know, it's like, oh, I, OK, now instead of spending 15 minutes going back through all these inboxes looking for deals, now there's in my CRM. That's one tweak that'll make you a lot of money, thousands of dollars over the next year, because you're not wasting time searching through a bunch of crap and you got your little adjustments made. So, you know, for me, it's about efficiency. It's like I adjust where my keyboard went. I sold a piece off of my desk because I couldn't get close enough to my desk quick enough to, <laughs> to do what I wanted to. Uh, and and like I'll modify my workspace to move quickly because if I spend 20 minutes on a video, I'm not making money. Even if I'm getting paid $20, I, in my mind, it's not worth my time. So if so I that, can make that, that, just, that video. That just something to my mind, you know, yeah. uh, are there, are there products you stay away from? Like I get a lot of furniture you got to put together, lighting that they want installed, you know, all this crazy stuff and they want yeah. it installed for $20. You know, how do you, how do you deal with that or do you? I learned a valuable, valuable lesson. Uh, early on, somebody reached out, can you do this dresser? 100% I can do that dresser. It came in like 400 pieces. I had to hire someone to build the dresser. I mean, I lost money on it. No deal. They were mad. It took too long. Like, the dresser was hard to get rid of. Like, unless you love doing that stuff and you have a market where you can resell it pretty quickly, I just don't. And it just takes me too long. So I got, you know, and I got two bed frames right now at the house that I need to build that it's just taking too much time. And so I don't really do any installs anymore. Uh, I never do electrical installs because I don't want to die because I don't know how to do that. Um, but yeah, any big stuff, I, I stay away from it because it's you know, special for 20 bucks unless I really want it or I think I can resell it now. That's, and that's where, thing. that's where I'll do, you know, that's where I'll do stuff as well. So <laughs> uh, let's see. Yeah. Monty says yeah, Monty you're you're saying, man, he doesn't do no installs. I agree, man. I, you know, I, I'm, I'm a handyman. I can, I can do all of that stuff, but I'm not going to do it for $20. I get paid $150 an hour to do stuff like that in the world. You know, I'm not going to do it for $20 and, 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 and make their lives and whatever they're making off of me. Like I'm not a chump. 
you know? Yeah. Um, I mean, now if you had a place where it's like, oh, I got this, you know, I got this flea market, or I got like a contractor, or I got somebody who will buy this stuff, or somewhere where I can sell it, and then you have one fixture in your house where you're just like, boop, 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 and you know, you're just, you're just taking stuff on and off. I don't, I don't know. Maybe there's a there's a marketplace for anything, but yeah, I'm with you, man. I can't. Yeah, I can't do it. And if I need two people to well, carry I'll the it. Unboxing, you know, I'll say, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll do the unboxing for you if, if you want that, you know, and, and if they don't want it, that's it. Yep, Unless I want way. it, like you said, you know. Yeah, same thing, man. I, I'm with you. And it's just being efficient. It's just working smarter and, um, it, you know, and, and figuring that out. And now if they want to pay me 500 bucks, I'll do it. But they don't. So I won't. So do you or how do you look at your analytics on Amazon? I don't. I don't care. About Amazon. <laughs> I literally, I literally will look at, I mean, I do look at the number every day just to see like, okay, like, is this doing anything? But I think I quickly realized after I uploaded, um, I started with 35 videos. I think I was making three to $600. And when I get to like 1500 videos and I looked at, I was like, Oh, I'm making like 12, 1500 bucks. Like this math doesn't math. Like this doesn't make it, there's no opportunity here. Like they're going to throttle the shit out of this and there's nothing I can do about it. And so I think that's when I really, and, and also there was some, I won't say the name of the person, but there's somebody who's been in the program for a really long time. And they're like, let me know when you get to X amount of videos and you get to X amount of dollars per month and tell Crazy. me if it doesn't just stop because they got to that place and it just stopped. And so anyway, I, I think I, I got, you know, luckily I got some of that insider information or not insider, but just like, you know, like somebody has been in there for a long time. And I realized early on, like, oh, they control the throttle here. They control the Absolutely. dial. They control the faucet. Like, and that's totally fine. By the way, I'm not complaining. I'm a big fan of the program. I'm a big fan of Amazon. I'm thankful for the opportunity. But the key to winning at this game as a content creator, as an entrepreneur is to leverage the program, not to like rely on the program. And I think that's where I can win every day is by leveraging the access that I have, not necessarily trying to monetize the platform. And that's where a lot I, of creators are going to lose long term because they, they they think like I'm going to live off this money I'm making from this Reels program or this TikTok program or whatever. And as an entrepreneur, you're going to make money off of doing deals with businesses in each you know or customers or whatever so in my opinion i was gonna say i agree with you with the with the throttling and holding back because uh my dog's gonna be barking but it's do you you, you put these videos out thousands of videos you start out with 100 now you got a thousand but you're still getting the same amount of clicks every day mm -hmm. you know no matter no matter how many videos you put up so there's definitely something to do with that um somebody had told me that it has to do with uh percentage viewed and that you should be cutting your dead wood so any any videos you have in your carousel that have zero views you should cut them out because that'll that'll jump your uh percentage viewed up and that one might kick the algorithm now i'm afraid to delete my videos so i don't know but uh do you, yeah. have, do you have any thoughts on something like that no i mean it's just too much work for me to figure out it's um I don't care. I don't, you know, it's like I could spend all day trying to figure out how somebody else's business works to benefit mine, or I could just figure out how to run a business. You know, I could figure out like what makes me work, what makes me tick, what makes me money. Uh, Cause at the end of the day, that's what really matters. And I understand the passive revenue portion of this business, but that I think there's so many more things to focus on that could generate cash flow. Um, you know, one of those being off site. Like if I was going to focus my time doing anything right now with videos and, uh, tweaking a video or doing any of that, it's going to be how do I build a chan another channel off of Amazon to drive traffic to Amazon? Because we all know that makes a little bit more money and then that's more scalable. And we can, I mean, not that we can control like who watches on YouTube or whatever, but we can upload a ton of stuff, not have all the regulations and requirements typically and, um, you know, like repurpose this content. So, I think that would be my strategy moving forward is and, and this is part of what I'm going to be doing working on later this month um, is bringing somebody in just to like really work on like expanding that offsite commission. Um, so, yeah, I, I don't I mean, I, I should maybe think about Amazon and, and the affiliate, you know, the influencer videos and all that carousel stuff. But I can't care. Like it's too up and down. It's too unpredictable. 
And I think of Amazon as bonus money. And I'm like, whatever commission yeah, I make. constantly changing, too. They, 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 it's always changing. They take the carousel away. You can't really don't rely on it for any, any length it, of time. It's to totally play. fine. I mean, they're testing, too. You know, they're a business. And I, I just think, like, if you if you do that, then you then you get what you get. And you can't pitch a fit. It's what my son's teacher says. You get what you get, and you can't pitch a fit. So if you want to put all your eggs in Amazon's basket – when they take away the basket, they run over the basket with an Amazon truck. Like that's the problem that you have now. And so, and it's true, you know, you got to focus on all the places. Everybody says you have to have the YouTube channel. You have to have, you know, this, that, the other thing, Facebook group, you know, uh, YouTube is good to have just for the copyright aspect of it, to keep yourself covered for copyright. If anybody steals your stuff, uh, YouTube's pretty good at that. Yeah. Uh, and, and offsite revenue. Now they're doing the, uh, the spring thing that they're doing the, the, the promotion where they're giving you so, uh, for the three months or whatever. Um, for offsite traffic, they, they they focus on offsite traffic. They want you to bring bring offsite traffic because they're forgetting the, and the people forget that it's the influencer program, you know. And just because you got in, you're not an influencer. You don't have offsite traffic. That's what they really want is offsite traffic. Yeah, exactly. Well, and you know they they got some market share probably getting eaten up by TikTok right now too. <laughs> no doubt, no doubt. Um, TikTok is great. Yeah, man. I mean, and we're looking to become, you know, we got a seller account on there. So that's one of my plans uh, is working. I'm working with a friend of mine here in town who has a product uh, he's put out to market and he's just looking for a little bit more exposure. So I was like, hey, why don't you sell them to me at wholesale or let me pre-sell them? But you then you sell them to me at wholesale and we can try to sell them because I don't have a creator account on TikTok because I don't have enough followers. Um, so but I have experience obviously selling product, have experienced sourcing products, sourcing goods coming from the promotions world. And so I'm like, why don't we go uh, on there and try to be a seller? Uh, and that's the cool thing is like, once you have the skill set of creating content live or live to drive or, or, you know, whatever, I mean, you can really go do anything. It's, it's insane. Yeah. I, I didn't have the 5,000. You saw me on the, on TikTok that time. And, uh, you know, I, I got into the workaround where you, you go in as a seller and you open up a shop and then everybody was, you're poo pooing it. You're going to get shut down, blah, blah, blah. So I hooked up a shop and I, I hooked up Printify to the shop. So I got print on demand going through the shop. So they're not going to shut oh, me down because nice. I'm using, I'm using it the way they intend it. Yeah. And I can still do my videos and, 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 and get the creator side too. And I'm not killing it, you know, but it's, it's extra income, you know, it's extra yeah. income for a couple of, couple of minutes every day, just putting out a, a short video and the products are coming in. And the good thing is the products are also on Amazon. So you can do, you can do videos and now I can post stuff on Amazon as well. So it's, it's so, and I can resell it. Go ahead. So, so let me ask you, are you, so you're a seller and you're selling your product, but then you're also promoting other people's product on there. And Correct. They're, and they're cool with that. As long as you have your own product. So far. So far, I haven't got shut down. I mean, I hear people get shut down all the time. Yeah. But I think I'm not getting shut down because I have the shop hooked up as a shop. It's hooked you know? up as so a they, shop, yeah. That's know? cool, man. So it's, 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 I, yeah, I often – I thought about that. And then another th another thing too is like um, – and I'm working kind – I mean, hopefully I get the product today, but there's a guy who sells like an 18-pound coffee mug on Amazon. And so he's like, dude, this thing sells out like all the time. And I was like – well, dude, let me try to sell it on TikTok. If you warehouse them in the U.S., then you can just drop ship them for me, you know, right to consumer. Um, and so we're talking about doing that. And I checked in on it. And, and apparently that's OK, too, to drop ship. Yeah, I mean, just like what you're doing, you're drop shipping essentially off of your your store. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so I think that's an interesting model as well. Um, that I don't know. So we'll, we'll see what happens. Yeah, I don't think they consider it job shipping. If, if you put that down as your warehouse, you put down the warehouse address, that's where you're shipping from. It's not, the, yeah. it's not the same thing, you know? Oh, gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. I haven't looked to re I haven't really looked into it because uh, I would ship from here for the first, you know, round of products or something. But then also somebody else told me that I think it's in an influencer group that they are actually, um, selling one off of the product that they get from Amazon over on TikTok as a shop. Yeah. I've never I've seen I, that too. I, yeah. Okay. I, yeah. So that's kind of an interesting model. I, I was thinking like, hmm, maybe I should try that because uh, I sell and whatnot, but I haven't sold on TikTok. So I don't know. No, it, I have seen people doing it and I thought about doing it. It just, it's, it's, I don't have time to do it. You know, so if I had the time, you know, the other thing I wanted to touch on with you was you, you mentioned about hiring somebody a little bit ago and uh, I had gotten a VA to, to take care of my offsite traffic. I was my, my YouTube, my Facebook group. And, uh, you know, I was paying them 
I think five dollars an hour, or whatever country he was from. And and uh, the thing was, they're college graduates. They 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 know what they're doing. But for whatever reason, he wasn't putting the disclaimer on. I went back and found out all the stuff he did. He didn't have any disclaimers. You know, as an Amazon affiliate, I earned commissions. So I I panicked. I fired him. And I had to go back and delete a bunch of stuff. But you really have to be careful when you're, you're turning your account over to other people. You know, and yeah. if, if they, they don't care about it as much as you do, you know. So, yeah, well, fortunately, the person who's going to be working on all my stuff, I think, is going to be my wife. So I'm going <laughs> to be like, uh, yeah, work. yeah, she's she's real. She's a graphic designer, website developer, and and works you know works in the marketing area as well. So um, she's pretty good at all that stuff. And however, man, what I did to keep me from forgetting to do that is there's a way, and you probably know this. So I'll just say it for the audience, but in YouTube to set up like a preloaded, you know, yeah, description yeah. or whatever. And so I just preloaded all that plus all the affiliate links to all my gear. Cause a lot of people ask me like, what kind of gear do you use? So um, I just kind of preload all that stuff in there. So that might be a, a fix for somebody, but, but what I'm looking into, and if you know this or somebody else, and I'm sure there's probably like a Zapier um, connection is to when I'm upload my video to Amazon, I transfer all those videos over to Dropbox and so I'm looking for some system that will take it from Dropbox and immediately just upload it to YouTube without me having to go manually do that. So wow. um, I think there's probably a Zapier connection to do that, but I'm hoping my CRM guy will uh, either have that connection or or figure it out for me. Oh, I'm so. interested in that. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, because yeah. can you imagine like you're done, you just upload it into Amazon, upload it to your Dropbox, and then it uploads it for you. I just don't know about the description and links and all that. I don't know how that would work. Yeah. Um, what about going back through your stuff, uh, and seeing if, if your videos still have live links to them, you know, how many videos do you think over the, over the past three mm. years, do you think have dead links in them? Do you even worry about stuff like that? Man, pro I, I don't really worry about, um, any of that. I mean, I, and that's probably a problem, right? Like I probably should go one. I don't really post that much offsite stuff. I just started this week because of that spring program. Um, so I just started like uploading a few videos and, but then, you know, like when it comes to Amazon, you know, if we'll, you know, if talking about the Amazon influencer, uh, storefront, I, I probably have a lot of stuff on there. That's not, you know, valid anymore because I work with more, mostly electronics. So there's a new elect, there's like version four coming out, version five coming out, version six coming out. However, guess who they reach out to, to do the next version of last year's product. Me. Right. So it's residual over and over and over year after year, especially when you get into like newer models and things like that. So um, that's another reason why I think it's good to build, build your, you know, your customer list and, and all that kind of stuff. But yeah, man, I don't really get back. I mean, I'm terrible with offsite stuff, dude. I'm like terrible with it and I need to be better because there's, I'm got to be accountable, man. We got to be accountable. That's why I started my group uh, Tuesday, Sunday's nine o'clock, Tuesday's eight o'clock. We meet and, and we just to keep each other accountable. You know, what did you do this week? What are you doing next week? Yeah. Just so you don't want to show up and say, you know, I, I didn't do it. You know, you got to say, just so you keep accountable because I do the same thing. I, I don't upload my stuff to YouTube and that's where the money is. You know I mean? If I, if I can get that to click with, 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 with the product videos, that's where the offsite traffic, that's where the money's gonna come from. And that or really, really you gotta you gotta concentrate on the money making activities for sure. Yeah, you know? for sure, man. Yeah, well, well dude, it's yeah, go ahead. I was gonna say, so we're getting close to the top of the hour, and before we uh, get over it, I just wanted to say, is there any question that you wish I asked you that you want the people to know about? I mean, I think you covered it. I mean, you talked about all the nerdy stuff I love. So <laughs> I appreciate awesome. you having me. We really need to do this again sometime. Maybe do it every once in a while and just, you know, see, you know, what's going on in the industry. And it's nice to this, you know, chew the fat kind of thing, you know. It, it, yeah. It's great to know. But I really appreciate you, you know, joining with me with the hour. And we've got a lot of valuable information. Guys, the link is there. You know, join Billy's group Mondays, 8 o'clock. He has the meetings, uh, Zoom, Zoom calls. You can. Uh, get access to his brain and, and f figure out what's going on and what's changing all the time. It's really worth, you know, a cup of coffee, man. What, you, you're kind of dumb not to buy a cup of coffee on a Monday. All right. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah thanks a lot. A day. And there's like a whole group of, of people and things going on and I'll drop videos and tips and all that stuff in the background too. So, but, it, but I do want to say this to Jim, it's not a course. And I know people are like, Oh, you got a course. I'm like, no, I don't. I mean, maybe one day I'll get diligent and put one together, 
Um, but I'm just creating a group of other creators to have a place to brainstorm, keep each other accountable, uh, think about different ideas, think about different ways to inspire them. And it's come and go as you want. So if you want to come in, check it out, take a look around, pick up some tips, tricks, and strategies and leave, then totally cool with that too. Um, no long-term commitments, none of that. And you're right. It's 23 cents a day. It's like, I mean, you, you had to bring up that dreaded word, that course, man, everybody in Amazon influencer program, they hear that and they go, ah, yeah, yeah, yeah the course. But it, the truth is that the Amazon influencer program is always changing. So like a course is hard to do, but, a, but a mastermind, the place where you're going to find out what's going on and where the changes are happening, you know, keep your finger on the pulse of what's going on. That's what you really need. You know, yeah. of course, you know, I, I'm 100% behind courses. You know, I get them all the time. I, I'm, 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 a, I'm a lifelong learner, you know, and, and it's what I love to do. I love to learn new things. But, you know, it, these people that put out these courses and they're telling you to do all these things that they shouldn't be telling you to do and, and the program's changing. If you've got a course that's three years old, you're going to get shut down for doing that stuff. You know, yeah. so it's better off to come into the mastermind and, and figure out what's going on today. You know, yep. well, thank you very much for joining and uh, I'll see you next time. And uh, everybody. Join the group. All right, let me get the...